Today, Americans all over the nation feel overwhelmed by uncertainty. You may be a child or an adult from a city or a town, but no matter who you are, you know and feel we are living in an era of unrest and conflict. Families struggle to find jobs and affordable housing. Kids go to school hungry. And many feel afraid in our neighborhoods, schools, and in our own homes. We are grappling with the unknown, especially gun violence. In 2023, gun violence persists as a uniquely American public health crisis. Nationally, guns are now the number one cause of death for American children. In New York, gun violence continues to disproportionately kill and harm black and brown Americans. School is back, but these buses are empty. Each of the 1,200 vacant seats representing a child who won't be returning to class because they were killed by a gun this year. We've already seen more kids this year with bullet wounds than any other year total in history at the Children's Hospital. Powerful extremists stoke fear in our minds and hearts while attacking our country's democratic institutions, spreading propaganda and selling more guns. Much of the United States has focused its attention on what's been happening with two democratic lawmakers who were expelled last Thursday. From state capitals to Congress, they continue to push this propaganda that more guns will make us safer, despite all of the public health data. Um, and they're really pushing, you know, a, a, a message of fear um, to ensure that more money goes into the gun industry's pockets. It is shameful that the Republicans of this committee would use the pretext of violent crime after doing nothing, nothing to stop the gun violence that terrorizes. It doesn't fit. So this gun would be banned. I hope the, gun, the gun is not loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. It's regretful that Democrats have rushed to a markup today in what seems more like political theater than a real attempt at improving public safety or finding solutions. To the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court will decide if a 1994 federal statute prohibiting anyone actively subject to a domestic violence restraining order from having guns is constitutional. Time and time again, the evidence shows that um, when a, a domestic abuser has access to a gun, the likelihood that their intimate partner will end up being shot and killed is extremely high. We need more support in our communities, strong, sensible gun laws, and leaders that will tell us the truth, stand up for justice, and do all they can to keep us all safe and give us all hope. Now kids have to worry about their safety, Kevlar vests in school, and bulletproof desks. What kind of world are we living in? Do you think that the more than 400 mass shootings in this country this year could also be avoided if we had universal background checks if we did not sell weapons of war to civilians, if we had safe storage laws, if we had common sense gun legislation. They are essential threads of our public safety network. Our mentors, our counselors, our clergy, our credible messengers, the work that you all do every day is an inspiration. This is about fixing our community and just showing people that there is hope. I don't want people in the community to lose hope. I just don't. Don't lose hope. There are leaders like me out here and we want to help and we're going to help. I promise you that. In our classrooms at New York City public schools each week, students are sharing their personal stories and learning about the root causes of gun violence and the power they have to make their communities safer. They're developing skills and knowledge to be true organizers and advocates. What do we want? Peace. What do we want? Peace. You know, doing the work that I do makes me feel powerful, and I think it's the same feeling that the young people get when they do this work. After completing our reaction program, 88% of our students agreed that guns do not make you safer 
and felt significantly more confident in their ability to advocate for change in their communities. Students' trust in local resources also significantly increased over the course of our program, with over 75% relaying that they would seek out help from a teacher or friend rather than a gun. Over the summer, many students joined our Miller Mentorship Program. In workshops, they talked about the connections between poverty, fear, protection, and gun culture. Program like I was and others do a good job at one, um, telling kids the reality of the gun violence situation, but also making them feel empowered to do something about it. Allows them to tell us more about what they want or their perspectives. Before, I didn't really understand gun violence. I didn't understand, you know, what's causing it. Like, why is this a harm? I think. Gun violence in itself just became so much more important to me considering how much I learned about it and the factors and the statistics. Redlining, gentrification, homelessness, things of that nature can lead a young person to pick up a gun. Our students then took their leadership skills out into our communities to raise awareness about gun violence and brought kids, parents, and lawmakers together. I want you to know that you were the ones that advocated to improve the school year today. So this is why this cafeteria was done. In the Bronx, our students advocated for the needs of Bronx youth with a strong message of roots to resources. They called on leaders to invest in after-school activities, jobs, and safe spaces for the most impacted youth. In Queens, students amplified hope by demanding more trauma support and mental health resources. You are leading the way here in New York and far beyond. In Brooklyn, they spread the message we are better together by organizing a community block party to shed light on the social support needed. Our youth-led community projects built strong bonds, encouraging dialogue and peaceful conflict resolution. Society doesn't see it as a negative thing if he's not loyal, right? He's just being a man. Our new trauma support initiative helped gun violence survivors access mental health services, housing, and tap into the state's Victim Compensation Fund. We're here to support you. We're here to get you the services you need. But all in all, we're here to create community. We're here to make sure that you get compensated. We also brought New Yorkers together across the state through our Connecting Communities program to teach New Yorkers about the causes and solutions of gun violence. From the reasons young people carry guns. It's just the way the world is nowadays. It's like people feel like they got to have a gun to, you know, have power to school safety. We're looking to change the dynamic of what safety looks like in schools by creating a space where people are promoting peace uh, and they're promoting peace via conflict mediation, conflict resolution. To legislative change. Lawmakers want to expand anti-violence programs, have greater access to victim compensation and attacks on ammo sales. As new youth activists, our students use their advocacy and public speaking skills with the city, state, and federal lawmakers. We worked hand in hand with young people, community leaders, and lawmakers, healthcare professionals, and more to empower New Yorkers. We celebrated after President Biden announced the creation of the first ever White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention. Do something, do something to prevent the tragedies and leave behind survivors who will always carry the physical and emotional scars. To date, my administration has announced dozens of executive actions to reduce gun violence more than any of my predecessors at this point in their presidencies. Thanks to your support, New York is leading the way on comprehensive solutions, and we're seeing the results. By working in coalition with advocates and leaders here in New York, shootings have finally been going down across New York State and access to resources is going up. New Yorkers and all Americans deserve to go to school, to the park, to their office, to a concert, to a grocery store, to their houses of worship, or to celebrate this nation's independence without the real and present danger of gun violence. Together, we are making progress in New York, but there is so much more hard work ahead. We need your support to stay the course to prevent gun violence and save lives.
So I've been in this organization since I was a young person. I was 19 years old when I came here. And so being able to be a teacher now and have these young people with me and do this incredible work, I'm like beyond, I'm beyond proud of my young people. Um, <laughs>